When we're using categorical data and statistics, a very common way in which we will display that data is using a frequency table. I'm going to show you how to create a frequency table for our categorical variables using Microsoft Excel. To follow along, you should download the Describing Data Week 3 Excel spreadsheet that I created for you. That is available, of course, in class or through a link in the description for this video. Let's take a look at the data set that we're going to be using. This is the dog toys data set that I mentioned earlier in class. Now, the dog toys data set is a data set that I created when I was home working at home with the dogs during quarantine, the lockdown during COVID-19. So here I am working at home and my inspiration came from the dogs that were hanging out with me right there on the desktop as I was working on my computer. And so I came up with this idea of a survey that we would do regarding dogs. 50 dogs were asked a series of questions. We asked them things like, what is your favorite toy? This is gonna to be a, a nominal level data. Uh, we ask, how many toys do you own? Which is going to be scale level data. And then we ask questions about their dog breed. I actually ended up with three different breeds. There's retrievers, fuzzy dogs, and chihuahuas, which reflected, of course, the dogs that I was hanging out with the most during quarantine. Uh, I asked them about the dog size, or we made note of the dog size. This is also going to be categorical data, but it is ordinal, small, medium, and large. Uh, then, as a way of saying thank you for participating in our study, we let each dog choose a new toy to take home. There were three toys from which they could choose. So again, we have nominal level data. And we kept track of how long before those dog toys got chewed up, which is a scale level data point that is uh, called days to fail. And then finally, there's one more variable. It's called favorite toy three. And Favorite Toy 3 is based upon Favorite Toy, where we have collapsed similar toys. So, for instance, Stuffed Monkey and Chirpy Bird were both noisy toys. Uh, the uh, Chew Toy and the uh, Rope Bone, those were uh, the Chewy Toys. And then, of course, the Tennis Ball stayed as Tennis Ball, giving us this Favorite Toy 3 variable. On the first tab of this set, you, of this uh, spreadsheet, uh, you have the entire data set. We're going to export that, or rather import it, into JASP or SPSS later on. So for now, let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet and take a look at these other tabs. As you work your way across the tabs, at the bottom you'll notice the first tab with dark blue is called Frequency. That's where we're going to begin. I've already set up the basics of a frequency table. We're going to start with simple frequency, which is going to go in this first column, then relative frequency and percent frequency. But you also have three additional tabs. Here we have the simple frequency tab, and you can now see the formulas that I used for creating these data points. Relative frequency is the simple frequency divided by the total, which we're going to find in cell D7. We're going to anchor that, make that an absolute reference for when we create this formula. And then we'll see the percent frequency, which is the relative frequency times 100, which makes it a percentage. You also see a properly formatted APA style frequency table with the right font, uh, the right size. And this gives you an example of something you might use if you were formatting your frequency table for presentation in a paper that you were writing or something you were creating for your class. I'm going to do all of the work on that first tab labeled frequency. You're free to look at the other tabs if you want to take notes about the specific formulas that I was using. So let's get started. Let's go to this frequency tab and we are going to create frequencies. We're going to let Excel do the counting for us in this frequency. In the first column, you'll notice that I have all of the responses for what is your favorite toy. And then I've created in column C, 
a list of all of the toys that I know were available. We're going to use the count if function from Excel to calculate the frequencies. Now the count if function has two arguments. The first one says where to look. Look in this column of data. The second argument is what to look for. Look through this column of data and count if the information that you find in that column matches this thing that I have specified. Let me show you how that would work. For this first relative frequency, we're going to put our cursor in D2 and type count equal sign, count if, open parentheses. I want everything in column A, so I'm going to just click on that A, and you'll see it gives me A colon A, which means anything in that column. Now, comma, and the thing that I want to identify is what I want counted is stuffed monkey, which is in C2. I'm just going to click on C2 and close parentheses. Now, Excel is going to look through column A. Anytime it finds stuffed monkey, it is going to count that and return it to cell D2. Hit return. I have a 10. That's how many of the dogs chose the stuffed monkey as their favorite toy. Now, I don't want to have to retype the same formula for all the subsequent cells, so I'm simply going to click and drag. This is going to work because the cell that is being referenced for the formula will always be the cell immediately to the left of where I have my cursor placed. So, for instance, in cell D3, it's referring to, I'm sorry, in cell D2, is referring to stuffed monkey, which is in C2. All I need to do to copy this formula down is click on D2, grab this handle, you see how my cursor is turned into a plus sign, just drag it down, and now if I look in uh, D6, it is referencing cell C6 counting any occurrences in column A of anything that matches C6, which of course is tennis ball. Next we're going to need a total for this column. To create the total, we will use the sum function. In cell D7, I'm going to start with an equal sign and SUM, open parentheses. I want the sum of all of these values. I'm just going to click, drag, let off the button, and close with a parentheses. Hit return. The total is 50. And that matches what I told you earlier that, we're, that, that there were 50 dogs in this data set. And notice too that although I typed it in lowercase, that Excel will change the formula to all uppercase and format it nicely for any cells, any formulas that I create. So now we're ready to do relative frequency. Relative frequency is the simple frequency divided by the total. This is going to give me an opportunity to teach you a new skill for Excel. Let's go to cell E2. And this time I want to create a formula starting with the equal sign, which is going to reference the simple frequency. Click on D2. And divided by the total, which is 50. Now for this to work, we're going to need to anchor that D50 total cell. We need to anchor that or create what's called an absolute reference. That way when I use that trick where I drag the formula, the denominator will always refer to the same cell, in this case the 50 or the total from my uh, complete data set. So here is how I am going to do that. There's two ways to accomplish this. If you are using PC, the cell, the, the key that you're looking for is F4. And if you're using Macintosh like I am, then you will click Command T and you see the dollar signs around D7. That means absolute reference. Both column D and row 7 have been anchored, as is indicated by those dollar signs. Now I'm going to click Return to complete that formula. There's my first relative frequency. And now all I need to do is drag that formula all the way down to row 6, and I've completed my relative frequency column. To create a percent frequency, I'm going to multiply the relative frequency times 100. But I'm going to do that in a different way than you might expect. 
Now, I could simply use a formula, equal sign, reference the relative frequency, asterisk 100. But I'm going to show you a different way to get there, which I think is going to give us a better, uh, it's going to look better if we do it this way. Let's go to cell F2. And all I'm going to do is reference the relative frequency. Start with my equal sign and then click on relative frequency. That's all I need to do. I'm going to return. There's my percent frequency. And of course, right now it looks exactly like the relative frequency. But I'm going to format that using the percent style button. Just click on that. Now it's been changed to 20%. As I've done before, drag down. There are the percentages for my percent frequency. And that's your first lesson. How to create a frequency table for categorical data using Microsoft Excel.